Chapter number four, we look into development of van technology. First, we look into evolution of van technology. The data link protocol commonly used on early WAN include PPP, HDLC, and ATM. With the network evolution toward OIP, the IP-based internet become popular. The dominant protocol that we use nowadays is TCP IP. It's either IPv4 or IPv6. However, the internet technology based on the longest mesh rules must use software to search for routes resulting in low forwarding performance which has become the bottleneck restrict the network development. Uh, what does it mean by the longest match? If I have 192.168.10.1 uh, slash 24 versus 192.168.10.1 slash 28. So which one is the longest match? Uh, we know that the longest match is actually based on uh, slash 28. So which means that the router need to look up the IP address in the routing table. So that make it very resource intensive. So what is the solution then? So MPLS, okay, or multi-protocol label switching was originally proposed to improve the forwarding speed of the router. The reason is because of the longest mesh over here. So compared with traditional IP routing mode, MPLS pass IP packet header only at the network edge during the data forwarding. So only at the edge, remember on the CE that we are doing the lookup. But when it go into the PE, which is transit node, it will be based on label. Without the need to pass IP packet, this speed up the software processing. That was the motivation when we first started MPLS. With the improvement of router performance, the route search speed is no longer a bottleneck for network development. Trust MPLS losses its advantage in fast forwarding speed. However, leveraging support for multi-layers label because in the MPLS, we do not necessarily just use one stack of label. We can use multiple stack of label and connection-oriented forwarding plane. MPLS is widely applied in various scenarios such as virtual private network, traffic engineering, and QoS. So which means that the motivation for us to develop MPLS was because of the slow speed of IP routing. But then because advancement in router performance that diminished the MPIS advantage. But then we also notice that MPIS can use multiple label and they also have a connection oriented that make it still very attractive in the service provider space. Let us look into more detail now. So let's look into traditional IP routing and forwarding. Traditional IP uses hop and hop forwarding. When I actually go into my gateway, in this case R1 is my gateway, R1 is going to look up the address on the routing table, it forward to R2. So when R2 receive it, it's going to check where is the best route for me to send to the destination. It can be on R3 or it can be an R4, but based on the routing table, R3 will be the preferred one, so I will forward it into R3. When R2 receive it, it's going to check its routing table, then it forward to R5. This is what we call the hop by hop forwarding. So each time a data packet passes through a router, the router decapsulate the packet to check the network layer and search its routing based on the longest mesh to get the packet forwarding. The repeat process of decapsulating the packet, searching the routing table and re-encapsulate the packet actually have a very low performance. So that is the traditional IP routing and forwarding. In summary, all routers need to know the network-wide routes that's where we need to use RIP, OSBF, ISIS to distribute the route. And secondly, traditional IP forwarding is connectionless oriented and cannot provide good end-to-end -end, uh, QoS because IP is considered connectionless. So how can we circumvent this low performance in routing as well as the nature of IP is connectionless? So the solution for this is using MPLS. So what's the difference between uh, the MPLS and IP forwarding? Based on the similar topology, as you can see that when it go into the edge, so this is where we have the PE, uh, the IP address is still the same. We still need to do the lookup. But once you go into the PE, it's actually added in 
the label, MPS label. So once you have a label, router 2, send the label to router 3. Router 3 do not need to look into the IP address. It simply look into the label to do the decision and forward to the edge of the service provider where it reached to the PE number 5. It will remove the label. As you can see that the top label is gone and is forward as ordinary IP packet. So what is the advantages of using MPLS then? MPLS is used on IP backbone network. This is the IP backbone network, this part here. MPLS is a tunneling technology that provides connection-oriented switching for network layer based on IP routing and control protocol. It provides better QoS. So you see over here, the difference is it is a connection-oriented, whereas using IP is connectionless. MPLS label instead of IP are searched for to forward, which greatly improve performance efficiency. So we no longer limit to longest match. And label used in MPLS forwarding can be manually configured or dynamically allocated using label distribution protocol. Label distribution protocol or LDP is a protocol to distribute the MPLS label. These are the advantages of using MPLS. But MPLS, after a while, we also determine there are some problems. So let's look into MPLS forwarding problem. MPLS label can be statically or dynamically distributed. I mentioned that on the previous slide. The problem are as follow. So firstly, MPLS label need to be distributed. And because of this distribution, they need to distribute either you use a static label or dynamic label. If you are using a static label, it requires a lot of manual configuration, which is very tedious. As a network scale or expand, the topology are prone to changes. Static label cannot meet with the requirement. So that's why we need to use some sort of a dynamic label distribution protocol. So which is good. Remember just now I mentioned, uh, it is the LDP. You cannot just purely use the IGP. You have to introduce another protocol. So here we have uh, IGP that's being run, which is the red color. And we also need to run LDP, Label Distribution Protocol. So there are two protocols running in the MPS domain here. So what's the issue then? So some dynamic label distribution protocol do not have path computation capability. It refers to uh, the uh, LDP and need to use IGP to compute the path. In addition, the control plane of this protocol are complex, require devices to send large amount of messages to maintain peer and path status, wasting link bandwidth and device resources. What is more, despite supporting uh, traffic engineering, some labor distribution protocol require complex configuration and do not support load balancing. This LDP have its own limitation and uh, they also require a lot of computation. So device have to send a large number of protocol packet to maintain a proper path. In addition, as devices are independent and not only to their own status, they need to exchange signaling packet, which also wastes the bandwidth and uh, device resources. Refer to another protocol, which is RSVP. So we use this RSVP for uh, traffic engineering purpose. So these are some of the uh, problem in the MPRS. So what is the solution then? So we are going to look into the solution now. We are not going to go through the entire segment routing theory, but it will be sufficient to give you a high level of what is segment routing is all about. So no command line over here, not to worry. So let's look into the introduction to segment routing. To solve the problem facing traditional IP forwarding and MPS forwarding, the industry proposed segment routing. Segment routing make the following improvement. IETF actually start with this uh, segment routing and uh, segment routing can be implemented by multiple vendor. So what is the solution? The first solution that I look for is to extend the existing protocol. The extended IGP and BGP have the label distribution capability, eliminating the need for other label distribution protocol on network, thereby simplify uh, the protocol. So we have the LDP. Remember that this LDP, now they do not use it anymore. So what is being replaced? They are being extended using the OSPF or the IS. IS. So this protocol has been extended. 
and at the same time they also do the BGP LS which is stand for uh, BGP uh, link state so this protocol has been extended so LDP no longer needed a second solution is to introduce the source routing mechanism as you can see that IP routing is a destination routing but we can actually use the source routing mechanism and controller can centrally calculate path so in segment routing they introduce the controller and lastly allow network to identify by services which is important network are driven by services after service requirements such as latency bandwidth packet loss rate requirement are raised by application a controller can collect information such as network topology bandwidth usage and latency and calculate the explicit path based on the requirement which means that the controller based on the requirement can give different application different path so that is the benefit of using the segment routing.